Hi, this video is going to be about bar models. In a previous video it was all about turning word problems into bar models and I used paper cutouts. But in this one I want to show you how you might draw them on paper to help solve problems eventually. And we're going to turn those bar, pro those bar models finally into algebraic expressions to show you how the word problem relates to the bar model which then relates to the algebra. Okay, now's a good time to take out your notebook and pencil. Feel free to keep pausing the video throughout so that you can take an accurate set of notes. Okay, first one. I'm thinking of a number and I add 15 to it. I'm going to use this red rectangle to represent the number that I'm thinking. I'm going to use the purple to represent the 15 that I've added to it. I think I might shrink that 15 down a little bit. Not sure how big the number that I'm thinking of is, but it doesn't matter too much. So then we start to get what looks like a bar model, bring that together. And then the last thing that I need to do is annotate it. So I know that this bit is 15. And that's what I've added on to the number I'm thinking of. I should label this because otherwise people are going to want to know, do we know what it is? We don't know what it is, so I'll have to give it a letter or a variable and the most sensible one that I can think of would be an N for number. It could have been any letter of the alphabet, but um, I chose N. So, here we have the bar model. It represents N with 15 adding on to it. I hope you can see that. It's important that you can see what's going on there. And now if I write that as an algebraic expression, it would look like that. Simple. Okay, another example. I'm thinking of a number and I multiply it by 6. This is going to represent the number that I'm thinking of and then I multiply it by 6. So 1, 2, you see I'm multiplying it, I've multiplied it by 3 so far. In fact if I just double that, there we go. So that's what a bar model would look like if I had a number that I then multiplied by 6. Now again I need to label it and okay this time instead of using the letter N I'm going to label it with the letter U. Okay now I could label each one of these however the thing about the bar model is that if you've got something that's clearly the same size rectangle and you label it once so I've labeled it U then it should be obvious or it should be you should be able to inf infer that all of these are used as well now I'm gonna write this as an algebraic expression it's very simple that's one u this would be two u's this would be three u's that would be four u's five u's and six u's so in total I've got six u's I can write that in different ways u plus u plus u plus u plus but the simplest form would be for me to write that as 6u. That, by the way, as you probably know, stands for 6 times u. Okay, so there you go, 6u it is. Next example. I've got two examples now side by side because they're, they're subtly different from each other. I'm thinking of a number and I take away 15 from it. So this is going to be the number that I'm thinking of make it a little bit bigger and then it says I take away 15 from it okay so in that case I will need to label it accordingly I'm taking away 15 so that's the whole number the original number but I've got to take something away from it so I'm gonna just draw a dashed line and that would be the bit that I sort of snip off and label it of course so this is the 15 that I've taken away Now I probably need to show that the whole number was the number that I was thinking of and I will give that, I'll use the letter M for that. So the whole thing is M, remember, and then we're taking away 15. This is not M. Okay, this is not M. Definitely not. It's the whole thing that was M and then we took away 15. So I'll just get rid of that. Now, new example, I think you have a number, and I take away 15 
and take it away from 15. Okay, now that's the key difference. This time, the bit that we're taking away is the number that we're thinking of. Okay, so this then is m and the whole thing represents 15. Okay, uh, so there's a subtle difference. Here, I'm taking 15 away from m. Here, I'm taking m away from 15. And so the algebraic expressions would look like this. m take away 15 and 15 take away m. Subtle difference, but it important to notice because if we replace m with a value here or here, there aren't many values where you'd get the same answer. Okay, in fact, 15 would be the only one where you'll get the same answer. Um, otherwise, these are two very different expressions. Next one. I'm thinking of a number and I divide it by 8. Okay, so this rectangle will represent the number that I'm thinking of. And I divide it by 8. So to divide by 8, as you probably know, um, you want to divide by 2. That makes it look like I'm subtracting, so I should draw a, a whole line actually. Um, then divide each of those halves by 2, so we're now in quarters, and then divide each of those quarters by 2, and you've cut it into eighths. Okay, how do we label this? Well, the whole number, the whole rectangle is the number that I'm thinking of. I think we're about to use the letter B. So this is B. That's B. And then it's been divided by 8. We don't actually need to label it anymore. We can see that this is B, and we can see that it's been chopped into, or divided into, 8 equal parts. So I don't need to write, in fact, what I shouldn't do is write 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 on all of these, because I don't know that they're worth 8. I have no idea, because I don't know what B was to start with. So, in fact, I can't label it any more than that. That's just perfect. In terms of an algebraic expression, you can write this in a few different ways. You could write it as b divided by 8. You could write it as b over 8. Or you could write it as b times 1 over 8. I think this one would be my preferred one, b over 8. That shows that b is being divided by 8. But it depends on the situation. There are other times when you might want to pull it out as a multiplication, or you might want to write it out like that. Okay, next example. I've got two side by side again because there are some key subtle differences. So I'm thinking of a number, and I times it by 4, and then add 5. So there are two steps to this. Here's the number that I'm thinking of. Okay, and it says I times it by 4. So 1, 2, 3, Four. So that's me having times the number that I was thinking of by 4, and then it says that I add 5. So let's put that there. Okay, and now I'll need to label it. Um, so I'm going to say this bit is the 5 that I've added on at the end. And I think letter E is the one we need. So each one of these is a letter E, but remember that I only need to label one of them because it's clear that they're all the same. So there's four lots of E and then five added on at the end. Okay, time to do the one on the right. This time I add five first and then times it by four. Okay, so let's grab one of these. That's going to be the number that I'm thinking of. And this is going to be adding 5. Make that a little bit bigger, maybe. Yeah, there we go. So just to show you what I've got so far, this bit is the 5. And this bit 
is the number that I'm thinking of. So I've added 5, this is e plus 5, but then it says times it by 4, and that means times the whole thing by 4. So I'm going to times it by 4, and look, notice this time I'm actually drawing it down the page to show that it's the e plus 5 that's being times by 4. Okay, Subtle but important difference between the two examples, and now I need to write them as algebraic expressions. So this is e plus e plus e plus e plus 5, but we can shorten that to 4e plus 5. And over here, right, well, we've got e plus 5 to start with, and then we times that by 4. So should I write that? Well, no, because then that would mean that the 5 times 4 a bit is being multiplied. But I need to times the whole lot by 4. So I can write it like that. e plus 5 in brackets, they get added together first, and then it times by 4. Um, in algebra, there would be another way to write it, which would be preferred, which is to write the 4 first, and then in brackets, e plus 5. Notice that I didn't even write a multiplication sign between them. That's because in algebra you can get away with, as it were, not writing the multiplication sign between two things. So between a number and a variable, or between a number and a pair of brackets, if you don't write any symbol in between it, then everybody understands that you mean multiplication. Okay? There'll be another video on that. Right, another example to finish with. This time, I'm thinking of a number, I times it by 3, and then I take away 7. And then I times the whole thing by 2. Okay, let's see how this works. So, here is the number that I'm thinking of. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, there we go. And I times it by 3. So here's me timesing it by 3. Right. That's the number that I was thinking of times by 3. And then it says I take away 7. Okay, I don't know how big 7 would look compared to the size of each of these blocks, but we don't know until we have more information. So I can that's the best I can do. I will call that bit 7. And each one of these is going to be worth r. So this blue block is r, this is r, and this whole blue block is r as well. So we've got three lots of r, and then we've taken away seven. But then it says, I times the whole thing by two. So I need to take my three r, take away seven. Let's just grab the bit that I need. No. Nope. Right, grab the bit that I need, and times the whole thing by 2. There we go. So there were three steps to that. Times r by 3, 1, 2, 3. Take away 7, and that's where we draw the dashed line. And then times the whole thing, everything that we've just drawn, by 2. Okay, now it's time to write that as an algebraic expression. So if I follow the order that it's been explained to me in, times it by 3. So that's 3r, isn't it? Take away 7 times by 2. Except that it was the whole thing, the whole answer to 3 take away 7 that gets times by 2, meaning that I need to put brackets in. But the preferred way of writing it would be 2 brackets 3r take away 7. Close brackets. So reading this back again, and there's a, a follow-up video to this, I could say r times by 3, take away 7, and then times the whole thing by 2. Okay, Watch the follow-up video to how, on how to interpret those algebraic expressions. Now it's over to you, and this is where I'm going to leave you with four questions. If you hover your mouse over each of these blocks, it will take you back, and then you click, it will take you back to the part of the video where I explain an example that looks very similar to these. So what I want you to do 
is not to dr I don't I'm not going to ask you to fill in the form below with the bar models because obviously you can't draw them but you can write the algebraic expressions so I'm thinking of a number let's call it n and then I add 6 to it what I want to see in the form below is the algebraic expression of n with 6 added onto it and here I want to see the algebraic expression when you've taken n and multiplied it by 9 and here when you times it by 3 and then add 10 and here when you take n you times it by 5 and then add 8 and then times the whole thing by 6 okay so you need to fill in the answers to each of those four in the Google form below okay thanks very much for watching bye